Therefore, Muslims live by the commitment to scientific discoveries to protect and to cherish that which has been entrusted onto him, her, as well as the values of fairness, sorry, as well as the values of devotion, compassion, consideration, fairness, and justice. To portray them otherwise is ignorance and irresponsible. Despite their gifted ability to think and to act freely, humans are fallible, for God is the only perfect being. This imperfection makes the practice of faith a constant struggle. Judging another person's intention and final destiny sets us in the realm that's beyond our given capacity. In the light of harsh realities of our time, we must seek from God a continuous desire to respect the other because the disrespectful will not be in God's grace. The spiritual search for the divine is common to all faith communities, even though there may appear differences in the form. Maulana Jalaluddin Muhammad Balkhi Rumi says, the lamps are different, but the light is the same. One matter, one energy, one light, one light-minded, endlessly emanating all things, one turning and burning diamond, one, one, one. In addition to Islam's emphasis on Tawheed, one God, one humanity, Sufism, Islam's mystical tradition, adds a dimension of seeking the prom the promise of an all-encompassing love of the beloved and the dissolution of self. God is first and last. We come from him and unto him we return. Between birth and death is a mystic journey wrapped in beauty, love, and purpose. It is up to us to unwrap the beauty, discover the love, and live the purpose. Here is how Hafiz explains this concept. In the beginning, when your beauty manifested itself in your majesty and glory, referring to God, love appeared in my heart and set my existence afire. That joyous day, I, Hafiz, rid my heart of all motives only to carve it with your love and sing my way till the end. Sufi is derived from the Arabic word safa, meaning purity, is defined as a particular ethical discipline within Islam. Although each Sufi chooses a path or tariqah, they are bound by the same ethical discipline of one God and one love. Through zikr, utterance and remembrance of the name of God, and sema, listening and additioning of the voice of God, a mystic believes to purify both thought and deed. One thought, one word, and one deed is the ultimate destination to one purpose. Knowledge clarifies the mind and faith purifies the heart. The ego is a veil that comes between the mind and the heart, keeping both in the shadow. To find his, her enlightened self, an individual must pierce through this veil and let the light to shine through to overcome his or her illusory self. Khwaja Muinuddin Chesti of India advises, mere talk of peace will avail you not. Mere talk of God and religion will not take you far. Bring forth the energy of your being and reveal the magnificence of your mortal, of your mortal self. Be a blazing fire of truth, a beauteous blossom of love, and a soothing balm of peace. With your spiritual light, 
dispel the darkness of ignorance, dissolve the clouds of discord and war, spread goodwill, peace, and harmony among all peoples. God loves them, and they love God. Quran. A Sufi's bitter pain of separation from the beloved ends in the ecstasy of the union. Rahman Baba says, now I see myself as a saint and now a sinner. Such predicament between this gain and loss. The beloved is so indelibly, indelibly etched in my heart, I don't know whether I'm Rahman or the beloved. For a Muslim Sufi, the Quran clears the mind and Muhammad brings, brings it closer to the heart. As Maulana Jalaluddin Muhammad Belhi Rumi says, I am the servant of the Quran as long as I have life. I am the dust on the path of Muhammad, the chosen one. Now speaking of heart and love, at the end, I would like to offer a gift to my husband from the treasure of Khalil Gibran on the, sorry, on the anniversary of our love and our union as a husband and wife and to join all of you loving couples. We were born together and together we shall be forevermore. We shall be together when the white wings of death Scares, scatters our days. A, we shall be together even in the silent memory of God, but let there be spaces in our togetherness, and let the winds of the heavens dance between us. Love one another, but make not a bond of love. Love one another, but make not a bond of love, let it rather be a moving sea between the shores of our souls. Fill each other's cup, but drink not from one cup. Give one another of our bread, but eat not from the same loaf. Sing and dance together and be joyous. Sing and dance together and be joyous, but let each one of us be alone even the strings of a lute are alone, though they quiver with the same music. Give our hearts, but not into each other's keeping, for only the hands of life can contain our hearts. And stand together, yet not too near together, for pillars of temple stand apart in the oak tree in the cypress, in the oak tree in the cypress, grow not in each other's shadow. With love and love, your beloved. Thank you. I think we saw clear evidence that humanity's creation was not perfected with man, but with woman the day after. And so it makes it even more difficult, uh, although as a matter of protocol, I follow in her steps, but I think there is a lot more meaning to that than uh, the simple etiquette would uh, demand. So in the interest of time, I will express the rest of the feelings uh, differently later to my wife, but uh, let's get on with the business, which is the spirituality of uh, Islam uh, that consists both of uh, esoteric and uh, exoteric dimensions. And within esoteric Islam, Sufism is a journey from the outward to the inward, a journey be between transcendence and eminence, in which the Sufis become the personification 
of the ideal condition of fitra, which is the inner and outer harmony. This harmony is sought through knowledge and practices common to many spiritual traditions. Sufism, like its religious tradition, Islam, shares its universalism with Christianity through similarities in contradistinction. Christianity anthropomorphically applies human characteristics to God, while Islam and Sufism elevate humanity theomorphically to reach God by means of acquiring the essence of God's attributes. Through a potentiality of ascension, Sufism becomes like Zen Buddhism in that it strives to attain spiritual union with the beloved through Hal, a state much like the Nirvana. While the essence of Zen is in the being, Sufism's essence is in the tension between the being and the becoming. Sufis cease to be in order to become. For a Sufi, the divine is simultaneously the impersonal, universal, and conscious, as it is the personal, intimate beloved. In this perpetually transfer, perpetuality of transformation, the Sufi spins with a cosmic world that personifies the visible shape of most everything in the universe, from the electron and proton within an atom to the galactic spiral for which the enormity of our universe is but a speck of dust. Islam is universal Judaism. The mystical traditions of the two religions, Sufism and Kabbalah, have much in common as they keep the realm of the divine out of the reach of humanity. In Kabbalah, the divine has a name too sacred to be spoken, while in Sufism, the closest thing to a perception of the divine is that there is nothing like his like. Sufism relates to the many polytheistic traditions of the world like Shinto and Hinduism by attributing the characteristics of their pantheons as the 99 names of the one and only God. In the same vein, Sufism takes the dualism of Zoroastrianism back to its original interpretation in that the darkness of the Ahriman is but the shadow side of the self that must be tamed in order for the light to shine through. A whole gamut of theosophical precepts make Islam very inclusive and turns Sufism into a confluence of reason and faith that is unique and universal at the same time. While through an illusion of superiority, some create the otherness in others and look for differences. Sufis emphasize the similarities among the various mystical traditions through which humanity bonds in harmony. That sameness becomes more evident as we leave the outer shell of socially identifiable religions and immerse in the beauty of their inner, inner spiritual cores. My five-year-old Sarah, who's not five years anymore, down here, was once trying to convince her two-year-old sister Nadia that the blue balloon, which neither of them wanted, was as good as the red balloon that they both liked by telling her, Nadia, look, it's the same difference. I marvel at the beauty and simplicity of childhood wisdom and how it st stands in stark contrast to the mind-numbing entangled syllogisms of the adult language that marginalizes thought and meaning. It seems like we lose a lot more than just innocence as we supposedly grow. The balloon analogy does apply to our religious identities as well. The outer shells of our traditions are like inflated balloons. Regardless of color, their smooth and shining surfaces reflect our warped egos. 
In actual size, they are manageably harmless. Yet, when full of hot air, they can blow up on our face. But when filled with the spirit of Elohi, or Elohim, often misspelled as helium, same letters, these balloons rise to a higher realm, and where they realize that the devastating divisive differences that some promote disappear in the oneness of humanity from up high. Through such oneness, universality, and inclusion, the Sufis strive to self-actualize in being in this world, but not of this world. They deny such worldliness with all its trappings. Rumi, whose spirit cannot be contained in a particular religious, political, or national identity, defies the claim of being an Afghan, an Iranian, or a Turk, and in a prophetic vision denies otherness in countless ways, as this abbreviated translation of his thoughts show. Chitadbir ay musalmanan. چی تدبیر ای مسلمانان که من خود را نمیدانم نه ترسا نه یهودم من نه گبرم نه مسلمانم What can be done, O oh believers, as I don't recognize myself? I am neither a Christian nor Jew, Majin or Muslim. I am not of the East or West, neither land nor sea. I am neither body nor soul, as I belong to the soul of the beloved. Knowing that the visible reality is defined by the limits of our sense perception, the Sufis attempt to know the unknowable through a reabsorption into the transcendent reality beyond the realm of reason and the fascination of faith. They realize that beauty is not in the eyes of the beholder, but in the tension between the drawing power of beauty and the throbbing of the human heart in a blissful suspense of love and longing, where the divine and the human consistently go through a role reversal as they reciprocally become the lover and the beloved. Losing oneself in such a perplexity transforms us from being to becoming. The 17th century Afghan Sufi, Rahman Baba, speaks of the joy of such loss of the self. Chehardam lakh palazana gurezaniyam, chehardam lakh palazana gurezaniyam ham puda lakadariyab de durokaniyam. Like a river, I relentlessly escape from my self and find myself a treasure trove of pearls like a river. In this spiritual reflective reciprocity, the divine and human mirror each other in awareness where the presence of one defines the existence and presence of the other reciprocally. The 16th century Indian mystic Abul Ma'ani Bedil voices this notion. به اقبال حضورت صد گلستان عیش در چنگم مشو غایب که چون آینه از رخ می پرد رنگم. I offer the beauty of a hundred rose gardens to greet thy presence, O Lord. I beg of thee not to leave, for like a mirror, your reflection would disappear from my face. While Bedil sees the reflection of the beloved in serenity, Halaj's pleading with the divine for a sign is answered through the echo of a resonance. What art thou? Thou. Yesterday and tomorrow are the book bookends of life. Turn today's page attentively as it speaks. If the words fall off the page, you will be written there instead. 
Life speaks of time's transient temporality and the fragility of sequenced moments. Life is not a chain of days strung, strung for survival, but a strand of moments to be lived in longing and joy, one heartbeat at a time. Every moment is momentous. What you keep for eternity belongs to eternity. You don't own it. You can't claim it. Embrace your non-eternal presence in the present. Cross the bridge of prejudice perception to the other side where there is no other. The essence of your being awaits you, bond with human souls beyond the illusion of otherness. Don't rush. Time's infinity will not be spent. Pause and steal a moment from time. Let that moment be now. Offer your nothingness as the price. This auspicious moment calls it numinous spirit to witness your confession. Cherish the moment. Blend in its wholeness. Thank you. Thank you very much for this beautiful presentation. Let's give them a big hand. Thank you. This was totally in, uh, in spirit of the evening.